Hello again. Today's video is about a very important marketing concept, the marketing funnel. The main idea behind the funnel is essentially that companies need to understand how their customers perceive their business in order to communicate with them in a way that will resonate well. For example, you wouldn't walk up to someone and ask them to marry you if it's your first time meeting them. You'd want to learn about the other person, maybe go out on some dates, meet the parents, have some deep discussions, and then maybe you're able to ask them to marry you. Let's break it up into how that works. First, it's important to position your funnel in front of the right people. It doesn't matter what your message is. If you present a catheter connection in front of a bunch of 14-year-old skateboarders, you're not going to get their attention. This is why it's very important for companies to truly understand their target audiences before attempting to address them. In case of a brand new company or an existing company promoting a new product, the first step in the funnel is going to be awareness. Regardless of how big or small the purchase is, a customer must be aware of a product's existence and its basic features before considering whether or not they want to purchase it. It sounds simple enough, but this is a time where companies must really invest in presenting the product in a way that truly highlights what they want the customer to remember. They are not invested enough at this point to learn everything about a product. So you must present what you want to be remembered for. This is where a SWOT analysis and target market research come in. The more you dig into these insights, the easier it is for you to highlight the intersection between consumer insights and brand insights that set you apart from your competition. You do that to prepare your audience for the next step in the funnel, the interest stage. Once your audience is aware of what you have, a good portion of them will hopefully funnel through and become interested. They're not quite ready to buy yet, but they're interested enough to go out on another date. They'd like to know more. This is a big win for companies, but it's often underappreciated. Your message in the awareness phase was strong enough to spark your audience's interest. But to most business owners, this is not a recognized result because sparking someone's interest doesn't translate into immediate sales. Companies must exercise patience and respect the stage the customers are in before pushing them into a sale. Instead, it's good for customers to leverage the level of loyalty they earned from audiences to present them with a second pitch. It's time to re-emphasize your main message, most likely one that strikes an emotional appeal, but now you can back it with rational bits. In other words, you earned enough of their attention to be able to tell them more. So tell them more. Your message may not resonate with everyone, but those who do connect with it will funnel through to the next phase, the desire phase. Those who have made it thus far like what you have to say, they trust your brand, and they're ready for you to meet the parents. Things are getting serious, so it's time to talk logistics. Companies can talk more freely about price, technical specifications, and seemingly boring things at this stage because the customer is invested. Now, and only now, is a customer ready to hear your close. Companies must make a clear and concise ask at this stage that makes the decision to buy seem like a no-brainer. This is it. It's simple, but so often misunderstood. I like to give an example of a neighborhood sushi restaurant that does not follow the funnel and then in contrast provide an example of one that does. As I give the example, I'd like you to put yourself in the customer's shoes and reflect on how you would feel. A sushi restaurant decides that they'd like to invest $800 into marketing their new establishments. So they create a coupon for customers to come in and get 50% off, and they mail that coupon all around the neighborhood. You receive this piece of mail and decide to try it out. So you walk in, tell them that you have a coupon, then what happens? Sure enough, you're treated 
like a second-class citizen for taking advantage of a brand new business who hasn't made a profit yet. You get seated. The waiter or waitress knows that you'll likely tip less because of the overall ticket price, so they're not paying as much attention to you. You like the food. The overall experience is okay. Would you come back? Perhaps. Would you come back and pay full price? Now let's skip to scenario B, a business that follows the funnel. The sushi restaurant sends out a mailer stating that they are now open in your neighborhood. It's a beautiful picture of sushi. There's the address, there's the phone number, and that's it. You like sushi, so it sparks your interest. You're interested, but you toss the mailer in the trash and forget about it. Now, they advertise on social media, right around 11 a.m. and 5 p.m. every day, with similar messaging highlighting what makes their sushi unique. You're interested. You drive by the place and recognize the ads. How do you feel? You're probably intrigued. A conversation may even start with your neighbor or somebody that you work with, and it'll typically result in, oh yeah, I've been meaning to try that place. Now you're ready for their promotion that may close the deal. You hear an ad, hear about a limited time event or menu item, and you'll likely act. Best of all, most of those who go in in scenario B are one step closer to going beyond the funnel and turning into loyal customers. They're going in advocating for you and wishing for the experience to be good. They're willing to go back and pay full price if the experience is positive. 